Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and today we're just enjoying some beautiful landscape, aren't we? Okay, we aren't. We are actually gonna have a look at MK Studio's latest release which is Tenerife North and Tenerife Sur Airports. And in this particular video we're going to focus on Tenerife North over here, as that is one where I frequently fly to in real life as well, so I'm fairly familiar with the airport. We'll start up with some general impressions here on the way in, I'll show you around on the airport and then finally I'm going to give you my personal opinion on uh, what I think and what my first couple of impressions are. So, starting off, as usual, MK Studios is giving us high quality textures all around the airport. We are well familiar with them. And just pausing here for a second to show you the um, level of detail that actually went into the runways over here. Now, landing at Tenerife is something really special because you have that big mountain over here. And that big mountain actually is causing some trouble. Tenerife is known for its turbulences and for its um, wind shears. And that's something that I'm really looking forward to experience in the simulator as well. Now, coming in. As usual from MK Studios, we do expect high quality airports all around. And according to the product page, the focus obviously is the uh, two main Tenerife airports. And then of course... Um, little bit of the surrounding areas. Now being familiar with Tenerife I thought that I personally need to um, have a look at this airport and that's what actually inspired me to do this video. So we've had a really quick look around on a very first idea now so let's start actually going into some of the details here. Of course many of you will expect me to start with the terminals which I can understand but from a pilot's perspective, the main detail that you're gonna see is this one. And that's the runway. Because, unless you're based here, chances are you will come to Tenerife via the runway. And, obviously, I hinted at it earlier on already, we are having some uh, highly realistic textures here. They are really sharp, they are good looking, even though I have to say, when we're going quite close up, those taxiway lines could use a little bit more definition. I mean, taxiway lights are looking superb over here. Now, all I hope is that they actually do some noise when you taxi over them. But nonetheless, that's part of the aircraft simulation, not of the airport simulation. We also have the approach lighting system simulated in 3D over here. There's even sh some shadows coming from them, that's really nice. However, do you notice something? Like, if we get a bit closer, entering the taxiways here, and what's this? What's that? That the light, right on the taxiway there. So, I don't know what this is doing here, but um, I guess we're gonna find out soon. Same goes for this box, by the way. It does seem rather close to the airport itself. So going on, from the runway then, um, you will notice there are several windsocks all around the airport and that's because the wind can vary significantly when you are approaching Tenerife. So notice this windsock and wind direction. Now we're going over to the next one and chances are good that it's going to be quite a bit different. You notice something? different direction, different wind speed, and that's exactly what makes Tenerife such an interesting airport to approach. Now, what's interesting as well is when you're vacating this runway, you will notice quite a significant upslope over here on the taxiway. See this? How close I'm getting when I'm not adjusting the, ang uh, the elevation of my drone camera over here? And this actually makes vacating the airport quite interesting, because you are going to vacate that runway, and then you are going to taxi all the way over here, and at the same time, 
then you are um, going quite uphill. So if you have to stop that aircraft right over here, in front of the line, because you're not yet cleared into the taxiway, you will need significant amounts of thrust to get out of here again. Next thing you're going to notice is the uh, fire brigade over here. Now it would have been nice if there was some uh, firefighting vehicles standing here, but um, I guess we can't have it all. I mean, we do have them in the background. Why don't we have any of them in the front? Coming over to the gate, in real life you're usually escorted with a marshaller on your way in. And um, they do have a standard taxiway system in here, which however we aren't going to care about too much for our flight sim purposes. You'll find lots of uh, different gates of all sizes available on this airport. It is able to uh, handle anything up to the Boeing 747 and indeed it um, did do so over the past. This leads us up to quite a couple of uh, parked vehicles and all of them usual high standard that we have come to expect from uh, MK Studios. The tower as well, like this is some really nice detail we can see over here. However, when coming up to the tower it's a little bit disappointing to see that it does not feature any 3D interiors. But we'll get to the uh, 3D modeling in a moment over here. Now, actually coming along towards the terminal, let's have a look at something over here. So, we're currently parking on gate Juliet 5 and before I'm going to show you some of the details that we can find at the gate over here, there is something I noticed straight away and that is... no, that's not that I'm sitting in an Abilin aircraft, unfortunately, but that is actually the time. So, look at this, we have 10.20 UTC at the moment I'm recording this, but looking out at the head-up guidance system it says 09.53. And um, I've actually found that even when I change the time, like I'm going to do now, this unfortunately appears to be quite sticky and just a fixed texture, instead of actually a working adjustable time. That's a little bit unfortunate. Anyway, we'll just do it a favor, we'll set it to uh, something quite close to it. Right, so, going out once again. Um, there is something that we need to have a look at over here, and that is the amount of detail that we can see at the gates. So. We're at gate Juliet 5 over here and this is what it looks like. Now, most of you are going to say, well, that's some really good texturing work there. They have a 3D terminal and hey, this is looking really good. And I agree, it is looking quite good. But this is what the real one looks like took this photo, I don't know, a couple of months ago, so it is a very recent photo, and um, let's compare what we're seeing. So the first thing you'll notice is um, that we actually have a, quite a different color on the windows. So you see the real one is more of this blue-greenish tone while in the simulator it actually shows a pretty white-ish. Now, in the simulator let's quickly have a look at it and uh, change the time of the day once again. So, see during afternoon it becomes a little darker but it never actually comes to this greenish tone that we are used to from the real airport. Now. I'll just set the time to afternoon here because it does resemble what the real one looks like a little bit closer. And just in case that uh, someone is about to say now, yeah, but uh, photos don't capture the uh, look of these airports correctly, then you are right to a certain extent. But I do fly to this airport very often, so I do know what it looks like. 
The next difference I see here is on the photo. You have the uh, header. Uh, sorry, you have the uh, docking system where the time is on that we talked about earlier on. And next to it, you should have that sign saying which gate you're actually on. And that sign seems to be missing in the MK Studio scenery. Also, if we take a look at uh, some more of those details, for example, if we have a look at the um, next pier over here, then you're going to notice that on the photo, the light pole is quite a, some uh, way further out and not immediately in front of the building. But even more important, on the lower right of the photo, um, just behind that uh, tuck over there, you see that there should be a door. And if we are going over here, that door is simply missing. So many airlines have their passengers walk into the aircraft and not use the jetways, and that's what you would have the door for. But I don't know why, it's actually missing. And um, if we're on it already, and if we have a look at this um, area where the light pole is mounted on, and if we then compare it to, for example, Google Earth, we will notice that that isn't actually there on the real airport. The light pole should be somewhere over here, just in front of the uh, red line, and should have a small fence around it. So. Apparently, looking out at the rest of the airport, MK Studios used the same model again and again over here. And while I most certainly have to say that it is a very good looking model, it is not what the real airport is looking like. So, let's have a little further look at uh, some of the details over here, because if we are in a nitpicky mode already, let's just go for it. We still have this um, photo open over here, so let's try to go into uh, some more details over here. And what you are going to notice is that the head-up guidance system has one, two, three, four, five, six windows to the right until you reach that point where the uh, building with the number four is linked to the main terminal. Now, if we're counting that. In the scenery here, we get to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, maybe even 11, depending on um, if you want to count the window right behind the guidance system. So, once again, we do see some inaccuracy here. And the question now for me is, of course, if the head-up guidance system, or sorry, I'm saying head-up guidance system, if the uh, guidance system is not placed correctly, then I'm asking myself, is the overall geometry of the terminal correct here, or is there maybe something wrong with it? But, of course, that is something that uh, I would need more detailed plans to have a look at, and in the uh, making of this video I actually searched the uh, photos I had, and I found that I did not have any proper photos which I could use to um, identify how accurate or not this is, so I'll just leave it at that. But one more thing that I notice when I'm going through the terminals is that they seem to be using the same textures for the same shops all over again. So you can see over here we do have some 3D terminals, which is nice. Ooh, that's nice. Small little, small little cavita over here. But um, what does come to my attention here is that the same textures seem to be used all over in the terminal and uh, that it has not just... Um, that they have unfortunately not modeled the interior of the terminal like um, as it really is, but they have done a general 3D model over here and then it's basically the same three or four shops that you see everywhere. Now, is that a problem? No, most certainly not. And that's simply because unless you are maybe based here at the airport or unless you are a very frequent flyer out of it, then this is not really going to pick up your attention. And all you're going to see from the aircraft's cockpit is this really nice uh, terminal interior model. Of course, we've seen more detailed models in the past, for example, in uh, Aerosoft's Brussels or in Aerosoft's uh, Cologne sceneries, but um, 
Nonetheless, I have to say that if we take into account what is included in the scenery, it's both Tenerife South and Tenerife North Airport and they cost approximately 19 euros, then I would say this is still a very good value for money. So that basically is our scenery from uh, inside and at daylight. Now, what do I think about it? I have to say that the uh, ratio of the price to the given quality is pretty good as always. Now, we are familiar with MK Studio sceneries and while I'm saying this I'm just going along the apron once again to show you some more of the detail that you can find close to the gates. So overall this is a very good looking airport that comes for a very decent price, especially if we consider that Tenerife North Airport is also included. What needs to be mentioned as well, if you're an owner of the P3D version of the scenery, then you're entitled to discount and the scenery will be approximately 13 euros ish for you. The last thing we have to have a look at, of course, is the scenery during night. And actually, let's quickly check dusk and dawn as well. So, throughout the day, if we are getting into the um, dawn phase of flight over here, then this is actually quite amazing. So while I'm looking at this, we still don't have the lights on, but they are going to come in a second. And this really is a very nice twilight phase over here. I'm just enjoying the scenery while we are getting along. Now, let's actually change this into a full darkness. Alright, so... Looking out over here... It seems a little interesting that the jetways are so dark and uh, not as bright as the rest of the apron because in real life light is scattering all around, so that's a little surprising. However, the scenery itself is looking pretty good and I would say that uh, for the price point at which this is sold, this is absolutely fine in uh, terms of it looks. It would be nice if we had a little bit more 3D details inside those buildings over here, especially since they are so close to where you are actually parking on the gate, but I guess that would really be asking too much. So overall, what is my first opinion on MK Studios Tenerife Sur Airport as somebody who regularly flies to Tenerife? It is a very good airport for what it looks like, with minor inaccuracies. And some of which I actually hope MK Studios is going to update. And that is primarily the way these buildings look like and the color of those windows, because that is something very prominent on the real airport. Now, that said, the overall texture quality that we see in here is really good. The aprons are looking realistic and convincing and I have to say that especially the color tone around the aprons has been really well matched. And finally of course the scenery itself also comprises of some of the terrain surrounding the airport and that is actually advertised so let's have a quick look at that as well. The car park is done to a really nice standard over here but something that does hit my eye a little bit. If you have a look into the far distance, you'll see that the overall island basically comprises one color tone. And the way it looks to me is that the satellite imagery that MK Studios has been using here is actually not made of quite the same color tone. So you notice that around the airport itself everything is looking a little bit different, especially when we are getting over here to the other end of the airport. Um, you'll just see that everything looks not quite as lively, but the textures are a little bit more matte than 
what I would be expecting from the rest of the scenery. Now that said, this is probably something that MK can uh, still have a look at, so I'm not too worried about them fixing this with an update in the future. Let me know what you thought of this video. I hope that you found this first look interesting, and if you did, please leave a comment, leave a like if you actually did, and I'm looking forward to see what you guys are going to say about this. Thank you very much for listening, and I'm looking forward to see you all soon.